All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 18th day of October in the year of our Lord, 2023. Let's go to the scriptures before some of you tune out. Luke chapter 6, starting at verse 27. But I say to you who hear, this is Jesus Christ speaking, the Messiah of Israel, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, who died on the cross for the sins of the entire world. And you can be saved, and only be saved, by faith in him, and that alone. But I say to you, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, excuse me. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. If him who, uh, to him who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, your coat, your outer garment. Offer, uh, do not withhold your tunic either. Uh, let him have your undershirt also. And from him who, uh, give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do, so, uh, do to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, like interest, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive back as much. Well, even without interest here. Excuse me. So even sinners love to sinners expecting to receive their money back. Or whatever they're lending. But love your enemies. Do good. Love your enemies. Not your friends. Your enemies. And do good. And lend. Hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great, for you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Well, that is pretty radical. Jesus was a pretty radical man since he was God. We should listen to him since he was God, since he rose from the dead. This is how you de-escalate. This is how you avoid war. Not by escalating your threats. Not by pulling out your guns and putting them on the table. You, you de-escalate by doing good rather than evil. You de-escalate by loving rather than cycling up the hate. Politicians use hate for their own advantages. Hate is powerful and they use it. We have no wisdom in the Middle East. We have no wisdom in the United States. We have no wisdom in Israel. We have corrupt, self-serving individuals who do not know God, who have no fear of God. And without the fear of God, you have no wisdom at all. 
fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom says, how can we avoid killing each other? Not using situations and disasters and injustice to ramp up passions, but to cool things down. How do you do that? Love your enemies. Do good to them. Do good to the Palestinians, Netanyahu. You're the one in power. You're the one that holds the, the, the cards. Prove that you're not what they think you are. Proves that Israel can be just. Prove that Israel is willing to do justice to the Palestinians. Tear down that wall. Tear down your concentration camps. They haven't worked, have they? It's just built up hate for generations. God does not hold us responsible for the sins of our ancestors. He holds us responsible for our sins, our injustice. You can't fix what was done in the past. None of us can, anywhere. But we are responsible to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God today. Especially those who are in power. This is not about criminals. This is about people and injustice to other people. Peoples. Israel unjustly seized the land. It was others, the land of others. It belongs to God. God didn't tell you to seize it. This is not Moses. You're not following a prophet, the prophet of God. And God waited 400 years for the iniquity of the Amorites to become full enough that he could justly dispossess those people, even though it was his land. God always acts justly. If you are not acting justly, you are not acting in the will of God. Israel's enraged, and politicians love to use rage and hate. It's powerful. They can manipulate people who are in a state of rage because they're not thinking rationally. The Palestinians, there's not much they can do. They can't tear down the walls. What are they going to do? Well, actually, they did try it, but... How can you keep a people that you dispossess from their land locked up in a concentration camp behind robotic machine guns and concrete walls for generations? Where's the justice? You don't care. You don't care. It's obvious. The whole world sees it. I've seen it. How many times now have you bombed Gaza? Did it make the problems go away? And Netanyahu, for his own political advantage, has thrown Israel under the bus by of making a coalition of the worst rogues in politics in Israel. The worst political parties, the factions that have no voice because they're too extreme, in order to get a majority, he brought them in and empowered them and granted them their desires. Power. People like Ben Gavir and others. And with them, 
You gutted the Supreme Court for your own political power. And now you have the goal of ethnic cleansing and building the third temple to some god, but it's not the god of the scriptures, on the Temple Mount. And starting World War III. Because that's what it'll do. That move by your government on the 5th of October set off the events that took place on the 7th. Netanyahu's government is completely responsible for what happened. They triggered it. They enraged Hamas and everybody else. And they've been doing this for years. And finally, it boiled over, much to the glee of certain people like Ben Gavir in Netanyahu's government. A man who now is passing out free assault rifles and uh, bulletproof vests to civilians. Israeli Jewish civilians who are now on the West Bank venting their rage on their Palestinian neighbors with their guns. Not to mention the police, now they're shooting people. In anger, people that who did not participate at all. Collective punishment. Oh, they're not Jews, kill them all. demonstrating how much you are like the very people that did such things to you some 80 years ago. Have not known the ways of peace. Have not known the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You don't worship him. You betray him. You are enemies of that God. The enemies of the God who delivered you from, from Egypt. You have not known him. You have the law and the prophets. You do not obey them. Do good. De-escalate. You want to solve the problem? Seek justice, not your personal advantage. Seek justice for the Palestinians. God will give you the wisdom to untangle this mess if you seek him and seek his justice. Love your enemies. Do good to them and you will de-escalate and solve the problem. Give them their land back as much as you can. Show that you're not what everybody thinks you are. Seek their interests, too. Not just your interest or the interest of the Jews. You are no more important in the sight of God than they are. There's only one God of the whole world. They are as human as you. And you are as sinful as they are. Do good. Forgive. As much as it's in your power, render justice to them. Set them free from their prisons. Tear down the walls around Gaza. Treat them as human beings, as equal inhabitants of the land. Turn those settlements on the West Bank over to them.
treat them as equals, for they are. Show as much concern for them as you do for your own people. And this will end permanently. Learn how to live in peace under God. Or else everything will go up in flames. And Jerusalem and Tel Aviv and Haifa will end up looking like Gaza. As you sow, so shall ye also reap. You sow wickedness and evil, it will come back on you. Because God is just. He knows what you've been doing. He knows what's in your heart. And it's not good. It is not good. Repent. Turn from your own way to his ways before it's too late because it's rapidly becoming too late.